but it says, do you think Andrew Tate, right, okay, do you think Andrew Tate's influence on young men and his definition of masculinity is helpful? Um, Andrew Tate. So I wonder how many of you know who that is, and if you would be honest enough to say you know who that is. Okay, probably half of you do. Good. Yeah, I don't want to speak about something that... I see some puzzled looks still. So, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. So I view Andrew Tate as, in, this, in a very similar way to the way I view, uh, like, Jordan Peterson and Ben Shapiro. Um, and what I mean by that is, all three of them, you know, these are just, like, cultural commentators, basically. All three of them say reasonable, you know, most of the time, reasonable things from which we can learn. Um, but all three of them have something else in common, and that is, as far as I know, none of them are saved. Like Jordan Peterson might be the closest, but it's kind of all cloaked. And so, like, if it's not obvious that you're a Christ follower, you're probably not a Christ follower. Mm -hmm. But, like, we learn from these guys in different ways. Andrew Tate is the, the most brash, um, and so you, I would not endorse that anybody would ever listen to him. Right. But it is an interesting question because I know you mentioned the basketball team. I mean, anybody at that age and stage, kids at PCA, I mean, lo lots of these people are being influenced by him. Um, you know, kids high school and college age. Um, and so, yes, he does speak a lot about things that pertain to men and masculinity. And as a result of some of the things that he has said, a lot of men are kind of finding their rhythm in their masculinity. So a lot like I have Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life, and, and uh, my son Andrew's been reading that uh, not that long ago. He started reading through that. And so, like, we can learn from, from Peterson, but we understand, you know, he is a psychologist and, and isn't necessarily gonna, though he teaches from the Bible time to time, you know, he's not gonna say the Bible is his sole authority for faith and practice. What I'm saying about specifically Andrew Tate is, you know, his morals are reprehensible, okay? And his faith is the Islamic faith. His faith is damnable. So we've got to be very careful to say, okay, yeah, he's saying some truth. These other guys say some truth. We can learn from them. Uh, but, but at the same time, uh, we have to learn how to eat the hay and spit out the briar. And with some of these cultural commentators, there's way more briar than there is hay. So you, you have to have discernment. And as parents, all of us parents in the room are trying to raise kids with discernment. Um, but the way Tate made his money is essentially through uh, prostituting women and making pornography. Um, that's why I say, you know, his morals are reprehensible. Um, and and so, so his definition of masculinity I don't really know exactly what that is. I know that he has said things that, that motivate men to embrace their masculinity. And so from that standpoint, I guess it's a good thing. Uh, but, but what we should really be trying to lap up uh, is what the Bible says about masculinity. Um, and so like I think right away of 1 Corinthians 16, 13, where the Bible says, quit you like men. In other words, act like a man. I don't need Andrew Tate or Jordan Peterson or Ben Shapiro to tell me that. Because God already told me that. Mm -hmm. um, so, so anyways, and, and what does that exactly mean? Uh, Andrew Tate and his Islamic faith may define that differently than the way that God defines it. And so the charge that is laid at every man's feet, especially young men, you're trying to find your rhythm in, in masculinity, is to learn what the Bible says about it and embrace those principles and apply those principles. Um, and, then, and then the Lord will bless you for that. And just talking about masculinity... Uh, our job as men, what we're trying to raise our children to be, is to grow into... The idea of quit you like men is the idea that men are going to be courageous. Okay, That's like an overriding attribute of a man who embraces masculinity, is be courageous. Okay, um, and, and so how does that shape up? The way we're trying to raise our kids is that they will grow into being protectors and providers in their home. Um, and even being pastors in their home. Every one of you men is to be the spiritual leader in your home. Your wife is not supposed to be the spiritual leader. Thank you, Brother Goldsworthy. Uh, <laughs> and what masculinity is, is it's a courageous understanding of what it means to protect and provide and pastor your family. And, and, and listen, some of those things overlap in some ways. When you think of provider, you think paycheck. That's what most people think. Roof over the head, I'm going to get a steady paycheck, and I'm going to provide. But it, it kind of bleeds into uh, protector. Because if somebody does break into your house, a man who is acting like a man who is courageous is going to be the, 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 should be at the forefront of, of providing, 
potentially his life in protection for his family. I mean, and listen, I heard of, I had a fellow that was getting counseling from me a couple weeks back, and he said to me, he said, Pastor, I fall asleep at night, and I run through things in my brain like, what if somebody breaks in? And he's got a young family, and he said, uh, I know where my gun is, and I got it over here, and if somebody comes in that door and that window, this is what I'm going to do, and on and on. And he was saying it like he feels bad for that. I'm like, brother, don't feel bad for that. Like, if you're running through the what if somebody breaks into your house, that's like of the Holy Spirit. Like, because you're supposed to be a protector who is willing to provide potentially your very life for the protection of your wife and kids. To me, that's, that's all part of masculinity. Um, and so be ready to, um, and sometimes on these long runs, I'll do that same thing. I'll think, what if, what if somebody tries to hurt my family? By the way, I hope you keep your head up when you're at a gas station. I hope you're looking around when you're in public. Um, I hope you're paying attention, because more and more we're seeing in, in these news headlines these just random attacks on people and their families. And, uh, and so don't be staring at your phone while you're out in public, because you just never know uh, what people are going to do. So men, it is, it is masculinity to be a protector, a faithful provider, and then a spiritual leader in your home. So if Andrew Tate defines it that way, I'm fine with it.